Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Video Magical and for Mac 20 Questions. And we're having a look at Emotion 5. Let's see what we can do when we're doing some transforming of the shapes and objects and photographs and movies that we have within our Motion project. If you select one of your objects, what you're going to get is you're going to get these blue dots on the end of the banding box. So what I can do with this is I can extend it out and I can do that in a freeform sort of way. Or if I hold down the shift key, then what happens is it keeps the ratio of the height versus the length uh, just right, or the height versus the width. And I can take these ones in the middle here, and I can do the sort of uh, squish the picture down for one two as well. So that's uh, something that can be done there. And also, if I'm moving this here, and I'm changing the size by one of these corner handles, and I hold down the Option key, then it changes from the in fact that's the free form that is because I've got the shift key held down if I hold down the shift key as well it's changing it from the center point or the point where this anchor point is and don't forget to make good use of the dynamic guides so for instance if I want to make this photograph the same size as the one that's next to it I can just move this point out on the corner here and move it out until I get the yellow dynamic guide and I know that it's just the right size Hold down the shift key and just extend this outwards and when it's exactly the same size I get the line at the bottom so that I know that the images are both the same size. Now what if I want to make some changes to two images at the same time? Well I select those two images there. What's going to happen? Well you'd think that what would happen is that these two images would both uh, change in size. Well they do. But the way that they change in size is interesting because watch this. I changed it in size, hold down the shift key, and they are changing in size, but there's a big gap opened up in between them. So it didn't do what you might have thought it would do. Okay, let's do Command Z on that there. And the same thing happens when you're doing a transformation, when you're doing a rotation, for instance. So if I take this here and I rotate, both of those are rotating exactly the same. If I select the whole of this group, then I can change this here. So now what is happening is that all of these three images are changing as a group rather than all of the images having a change applied to them individually but at the same time, if you get me drift. So that's uh, working with the group. So if I want these two at the bottom here to change, let's uh, deselect those first of all and we'll make another group here. And if I take this picture here and this picture here select that one there. Move these two in the other group. Now if I take this group here and I do the changes, now you see we're getting the changes happening based upon everything staying the same. Okay so I've got one picture over the top of another there and I can't see the one below. What I can do is I can still select that using this layer selection area over here and I can get to that and do the same things I was doing before but it's underneath. And if I want to change it so that is in front, all I need to do is take that and move it above. The anchor point that we have in the center here, we can change that move and put it in a different place if we want to as well. By selecting the anchor point like that, it's moving the whole image around. But what I can do is I can take this here. Okay, so the image is moving in relation to the anchor point. The anchor point is staying the same. And if I'm turning it, for instance, it's not turning from the center as it was before. It's turning based upon that anchor point, which is down here. So what I could do, for instance, even, is I could make this anchor point so that it is completely off set to the image itself. And then when I turn it, it rotates around that point there. OK, let's have a quick look at some keyframing that we can do with this now. So let's go to uh, the properties. We've got transform there. And we've got our playhead at the start of the movie. Let's move this off screen. And what I'm going to do is we're going to change the position. So I'm going to add a keyframe there. And you see that's changed red. So it tells you that uh, when I move the playhead along and change the position of it. So if I move to uh, frame 91 and then I sort of take this here, move it in. You see we've got a line there which shows us that we've got a good transformation that's going to happen there. That's our motion path that is. So let's move over to this one next over here. 
and we're going to change this now so it goes over there right tap on that and what I can do is I can change that so that it is smooth so now we've got a bezier curve on there so that's the whole line the motion path there now instead of going in straight lines it's going in a bezier curve so let's put that at the beginning there now let's uh, press on play so there you go it's coming in and it's moving around that bezier curve all based upon the anchor point there so there's a couple of little things that you can do with your transforming images and setting keyframes up. When you're setting the keyframes up, you don't necessarily have to use this button here. So let's play ahead back to the start. I want to say I want to do something with this one here. What I can do is I can press this record keyframes button. You see all of that has gone red there now. So it may be, for instance, that at the beginning, what I want is I want to have the opacity set to zero and then go to frame frame 31. What I want to do then is I want to have the opacity set to 100. And so that automatically puts keyframes in for you there as well. So I can publish this. So for instance, if I want this to be something that can be changed, I can publish it. And I can do the same with this position as well. So if I go to that there, add to publish, and I've got stuff there that can be changed when I get into Final Cut Pro. If I select the project there and I look at the project in this here, I can see here what my published parameters are. So I've got opacity and position. They're going to be available to me to make changes to when I'm in Final Cut Pro. If there are any things that you'd like to find out how to do in Motion 5, why don't you send me an email and ask me how do I do this? And I will find out how to do it and I will let you know with a video in YouTube. How about that then? So that's all for now. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and don't forget to click on that like button. And even subscribe so that when there are new videos coming out, you're going to be the first to know about them. Bye bye now.